I am on a mission. I need a new X-Series camera. Since 2018, I've been rocking the X-H1. I love this camera. The grip is great, the ergonomics, the dials. I've had a great time with it. So I'm lucky enough to have the X-H2 and the X-H2S. And we're gonna get to the bottom and see which is the better camera. Primarily, I do photography, street and studio. And you know this if you've been following along with my videos, but I need the new camera to also perform exceptionally well at video in terms of tracking, and autofocus for talking head and b-roll it's going to help me make better videos for you guys also massive shout out to fujifilm for sending me both these cameras to test out if you are new here hit that subscribe button i'm trying to get to a thousand so you could be that person to help get me there and with that being said let's jump into the specs so throughout this entire video this talking head is also going to be a test i have the xh2s on this view and it has the 8 to 16 millimeter lens and on this view i have the xh2 with the 18 millimeter 1.4 lens. If you see anything get wonky or out of focus, you'll know which camera messed up. So for the specs, I'm not gonna read off everything. I'm just gonna kind of read off the things that I find pretty relevant to my decision. So let's start with things that both these cameras have in common. Both have a crop factor of 1.5X as its ASPC. They have five stop IBIS or in-body image stabilization. The EVF is a 5.76 million dot OLED display and it is really nice. The GFX 100S, cheaped out on their EVF, and I believe it has something like 3 point something million, and it's actually pretty noticeable. And for the memory slots on both these cameras, in slot one, we have CFast Type-B, slot two, we have an SD with UHS-2. And jumping into the X-H2, it has a 40.2 megapixel sensor, it has a bit depth of 16, and it supports a couple different types of image formats, and for video, it will do 8K at 30p, 4K at 60p, FDH at 240p, all at 10 bit. And for the X-H2S, it has a 26.16 megapixel sensor. Its bit depth is 14. And for video, it will do 6.2K at 30p, 4K at 120p, FDH at 240p, all at 10 bit. Starting with the sensor, the heart of the camera, both camera sensors are the same size, 23.5 by 15.6 millimeters. So the big question is, is if I go with the X-H2, will I sacrifice the autofocus? Or do I play it safe and go with 26 megapixels on the X-H2S? But I can tell you right now, I'm not gonna be super happy with the image quality on the X-H2S because 26 megapixels is just simply not enough. That's why I upgraded to the GFX 100S to get some serious resolution and of course, image quality and all of that. Both these cameras have identical bodies. The only difference is in the identification. On the front of the camera, on the X-H2S, you have an S. On the X-H2, there's just quite simply nothing there. And on the back of the camera, in the top left, you have the model number X-H2, X-H2S. If you are coming from the X-H1, the changes are pretty substantial. The coating on the camera bodies feel a bit more grippier. The X-H2 has a similar rubber coating throughout the entire body, but it's kind of on the smoother side, whereas on these two bodies, the gripping is actually really grippy and it feels really sturdy in our hands like it will not slip. The new grip on the camera bodies feel a bit more ergonomic and it definitely feels a little bit more comfortable in my hand. Also throughout the entire camera, the buttons feel a bit more premium. They protrude out and bubble a bit more and they feel a bit more springy when you press them. So let's go over each side. On the right side, we have the memory door. It has the same latch that was on the X-H1, also the GFX, and of course has the two slots, the SD card and the CFast Type-B. And on the top is a latch for the remote trigger. And on the left side, we have some pretty big changes here. Instead of one door opening with all your ports, there are dedicated doors for each port. So this makes it really easy to just open one door for one slot, such as the power or the HDMI, and all your other ports are not exposed to dust and all of that pretty neat. On the top left, we have a full-size HDMI port. To the right, we have a dedicated microphone and headphone port, both full-size jack. And on the bottom, we have a USB Type-C for charging and data transfer. And this is an awesome upgrade coming from the X-H1 being a USB micro B. On the bottom of the camera, we have a quarter inch tripod mount. And of course, we have the battery door featuring an upgraded battery of the NP-W235. This is really awesome. It's the latest battery that Fujifilm puts out and basically all their cameras use this battery. It's really convenient having literally every camera using the same battery, even from ASPC to medium format. And on the other side, there is a connection port for a grip. And moving to the top, I've been testing the GFX 100S out since 2021, and I actually just bought my own body last August. So it doesn't come as a surprise to me that on these new X-H cameras, they got rid of the dedicated dials for the ISO and the shutter. It's an unfortunate change, but I did see it coming. On the left side, we have a PSAM dial, just like the GFX 100S, and a top screen on the right, 
I'm really thankful they kept this, but that's one of the signatures of the XH line. On the right side, they also added a bunch of buttons, which are easy to access. They have one for white balance, ISO, a custom button, and of course, all of these can be customized if you hold down the back button. There's also this red button on the top, which I would probably only press if it were an emergency. It's a record button. If you're in video mode, you can press this instead of the shutter. But the coolest part about this button is that if you are in a photo mode, of any sorts, you can press this button and it will automatically start recording video. And that's pretty neat. And lastly, on the side of the EVF, they moved up the illumination button next to the view mode button. The hot shoe mount is the exact same. And the thing on the top that I am most excited to talk about is the new strap attachment mechanism. The X-H1 and the older cameras, it just simply had this protruding piece of metal with a hole in it that you would stick the key rings into, and it wasn't great. This is a serious upgrade. Now you can easily attach your Peak Design anchors without any sort of key ring or anything similar straight to the camera body. This is quite a phenomenal upgrade, and it makes it super easy to take them off. Well done, Fuji. And on the front of the camera, things are more or less the same. The top left is your leveling button. You can either turn it off or turn on a 2D or 3D level. And on the bottom right, instead of a switch, this is where you change your focus from manual, continuous, or single. In my opinion, this is not ideal because it is not a tactical switch. It's a button. And it basically, you have to look at the EVF or the screen to confirm which mode you are on. Whereas before, you didn't have to look. You could just know the feel of the switch. And of course, on the bottom left, this is your lens release button. And aside from that, all these other buttons can be reprogrammed if you would like. And one important note, the front wheel is not clickable like it has been in the past. It's not really a big deal to me. I never really use this as a clickable button, but I'm sure it angers some people. And starting with the top right, we have our trash button and view photos button. The trash button also doubles as your drive button as they removed it from underneath the top wheel. This is yet another tactical feature that they removed. Headed to the bottom left, we have our display slash back button. And above that, we have the menu button surrounded by the arrow pads. Above this, we have the Q button. This is definitely a welcome change because before it was just really easy to mistakenly press the Q button when you were just grabbing the camera since it was located on the notch where your thumb would be around. Above this, we have the AEL button. The joystick now sits at the top of the right side, and it is the updated joystick that the GFX has. To the right of the joystick sits the AF on button, which is pretty much a standard placement. And just like the front of the camera, you can no longer click the back wheel in, which to me is a pretty devastating feature. I use this all the time, and I'm really disappointed they took this away. Also to just talk about wheels, the front wheel is the shutter and the back wheel. I don't even know what it does, but I'm disappointed that you cannot set the ISO to it. Fuji, please fix that. Fuji has gotten rid of the old tilt screen, which to be honest, I really loved. It works really well. And they replaced it with this new screen that turns all the way out, which is amazing for video as you can preview yourself. But this is the extent of what it does. You can't flip it. You can't flip it outward like this. To me, this is a pretty big deal. It's going to take a lot of getting used to for me, but it's kind of too soon to know whether I'm going to absolutely hate it or just be pretty angered by it. In terms of size and weight, both cameras weigh the same on paper and specs, but let's test this out in real life. So I have both cameras with just the battery and no SD card, and the X-H2 weighs in at 668 grams. The X-H2S weighs in at 672 grams. Pretty much the same, splitting hairs. So these are pretty light. Again, I'm in GFX world, so to me, they're really light. The X-H1 weighs in at 673 grams, so you're not really gonna notice any difference at all if you're coming from the X-H1. Body size-wise, like we've said, the X-H2 and the X-H2S are exactly the same. The difference between these new X-H2 bodies and the X-H1 is pretty negligible, just minor differences in the grip and buttons and all of that, but they're more or less the same. You're not really gonna notice a difference in size if you are upgrading. Let's talk about shutter sound. Both of these new cameras have really quiet shutters, as you would expect from the X-H line. But what's really interesting is that both these cameras have different shutter sounds. Starting with the X-H2S, let's listen to a single shot. And here's what a high burst at 15 frames per second sounds like. And now we're gonna listen to the X-H2 single shots. And here's 15 per second burst. And just side by side, here's a single shot. 
and the side by side, here's 15 frames per second. The X-H2S does have a quieter shutter sound than the X-H2, but we are kind of splitting hairs here. Both shutters are pretty quiet. And now the hottest topic at hand, at least for me, the autofocus. Fuji basically redesigned the autofocus from the ground up and the autofocus is truly phenomenal. Let's take a look at several examples. This will most likely be my decision maker. I won't go with the X-H2 if it means sacrificing the autofocus for the photo quality. I have the GFX for that. My main focus is gonna be autofocus for video, such as talking head like I'm doing now. And I really would like it to work well for fast things like shooting my dogs if they're in full sprint or even just faster. Uh, with the X-H1, I was not able to get many great action shots with my dogs. For the first autofocus test, I had both cameras attached to a single base plate, both with the exact same lens, the 50 to 140 at 50 millimeters. We're at my office and I'm basically just having Lisa walk back and forth. For the first test, I'm not holding down the button or anything. I'm just letting it see what it does for tracking. I have both set to wide tracking with eye detection. For the next test, I am holding down the button just to see what it does. And as you can see, both cameras are doing exceptionally well in tracking the eye, even as she moves back in space. The first test, I had my shutter at 1 60th. This test, I am at 1 500th of a second. I did forget to turn on the grid on the X-H2, but that won't really affect anything on the test, so it's not a big deal. And as she gets really close, you'll see the camera potentially loses focus. That's because the minimum focal distance is a bit large on this lens. And now she's jumping into some fast moving maneuvers. And honestly, it's weird. The X-H2S seems to do not as well in this test, at least in the beginning. The eye focus is really serious on this camera. It's doing exceptionally well. For this last test, I turn off AI focus and I just set it to subject detection just to see how that does. Still, it's looking like both cameras are doing pretty well. For this next test, we're gonna test fast action. And I have both cameras, X-H2, X-H2S, with the 50 to 140 millimeter lens set to 70 millimeters, both on a tripod, and we're gonna record my dog moving really fast and see which ones get the focus. So for this test, I'm basically, I'm recording both screens with my phone again and I am just basically holding down both shutters with one hand. Jumping into Lightroom, for this shoot, we have 739 burst shots. 350 came from the X-H2, 389 from the X-H2S. Basically what I did was I went through each, well, each shot and I marked everything out of focus in red and for the X-H2, everything in focus yellow, for the X-H2S, everything in focus as blue. And further, I broke down each camera into three sprints and then at the end, a handheld. The handheld was not at the same time. All three sprints were from the tripod in the same spot. So that being said, let's take a look at some sprints jumping off to a rough start for the X-H2. Nothing was in focus. So Chief is just completely out of focus. For the X-H2S, we have a different story, but as you can see, it, it locked focus pretty well. Chief looks pretty good and it did miss here. Looks like you got it there. Clear win for the X-H2 here. Let's take a look at sprint number two and on the X-H2. And as you can see, first shot, locked focus. Second shot, a little soft. It seems to be every other almost, but as you can see, these are perfect. Um, definitely great shot here. Full motion, slightly soft. And then we got some great motion shots uh, on this way out. And these are really cool shots. I'd love to, I'm, I'm gonna repeat this uh, in a sunny backyard. And if I get anything really great, I'll add it after this segment. But yeah, these look great. Definitely some serious action shots. And again, this is the X-H2. Now let's look at the X-H2 and we can't zoom in as far, but starting off in focus. And you know, we're still, this one is out of focus, but it looks like from this point on, let's just zoom out a little bit, point on, focus is pretty good. I would say due to the extra megapixels, the X-H2 looks better here. If we just match up some of these shots, it's pretty neat that I was able to get the best shot from this sprint uh, for, for both cameras. And again, we got another one perfectly matched up. Cameras both nailed focus at the exact same time for the better shot. So that's pretty cool. And it's really refreshing to get the same result uh, for the best shot since we're doing a side-by-side -side comparison. And again, just another shot that completely aligned, got both these in focus from the start of the sprint. So again, 
Really solid results on the second round. Let's take a look at round three. Round three did not do so well on the XH2, it looks like. Let's take a look at the XH3. Yeah, it, just not as well all around. I think this round he ran around like crazy. So I just kept going. And it looks like most of these were out of focus. He kind of ran off frame, so maybe that had something to do with it. And this was completely out of focus, but we did get this shot. This shot is a keeper. Look at that face, it's pretty crazy. Uh, also this one, and this one, pretty good. And a lot of unfocused shots. Got a good one there. Obviously it's off frame, so not great, but overall, Definitely some really great shots in this burst. Um, I mean, the space is amazing. Let's take a look at the XH2S. Still, just because you get the XH2S doesn't mean it's gonna magically get everything for you in focus. As you can see here, the back, uh, the focus was on the wall. It looks like there's definitely more shots in focus on the XH2. So from two stars up, um, let's take a look at, the, at my favorite shot zoom on in and again this within milliseconds of each other pretty wild that that my favorite shot um was locked on for both cameras so it's really really saying something about the xh2 it's not gonna do as well as the xh2s but it will definitely hold its own these look pretty close as well so as you could see locked that as well let's see and this one right afterwards and again, as Chief braces for impact here, uh, you can see, again, same shot, perfectly in focus. And again, even here, this is completely like off the frame, but nevertheless, uh, same shot again. So that's pretty cool. And now jumping into the final series, I'm gonna take a look at what I did was after these three sprints, I took the camera, I took the X-H2S off the tripod and just kind of put it at 140 millimeters and basically just bursted handheld and as you can see here, it's got some really great shots. This is the X-H2S. Uh, he was moving really fast. Looks like the dirt's in focus here. But, um, you know, it looks like the, the success rate is, I don't know, 40%. It's not super high, at least until shot number nine. And then everything is just kind of soft. So he's moving really fast here. He would definitely had the full zoomies but we are getting some shots in focus, or at least with the whole backyard sunny, there'd be some serious shots here. I'm gonna have to report back, but um, not a super high success rate, but nevertheless, we are getting some shots that are really cool. Catching him in a full blown sprint here, perfect. Looks like this was, this was a, a really successful story where just completely locked focus the entire time. Moving on to the X-H2, took off in a sprint, and as you could see, Got nothing in focus until he stopped. Again, this isn't the one-to-one, -one, but I'm not really seeing the same results here with the X-H2. So just to do a quick autofocus test with just talking head, obviously like we've been doing in this video. Um, right now I have my phone, it's right here. You could kind of see it in the frame. Point of that, the screen of the X-H2 so we can see my eye and how it is in focus. I know we're getting a little weird uh, blue thing in the background from the light, but as you can see, the eye tracking is really good with the glasses on, with the glasses off, really solid. The GFX has a weird thing where it doesn't like to track your glasses, but I mean, this is really great. Uh, it can't really go wrong with this. Let's take a look at the X-H2S, see how that does. So again, I have my phone right here. It's just off screen, so you can't see it. And we're taking a look at how it is tracking my eye. So here looks to be about the same glasses test. No glasses test. Really good, moving pretty quick. Never been moving this quick for talking head again, but yeah, I'm really impressed. I feel like this tracks it a little bit better when I'm moving in and out of space. I'll go back to the X-H2, just double check this. Just to check the X-H2 again, moving back in space. Honestly, you can't really tell the difference in a situation like this. They both are doing exceptionally well, and I would say this is a tie. Also, if you are enjoying this two camera setup, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton. Let's jump into image quality. So I am very familiar with the 23 megapixel image quality of the X-H1. And honestly, I expect the X-H2S to be relatively the same, especially since it is 14 bit. 
But the big question is with the X-H2, aside from the 40 megapixels, will we get much better dynamic range out of the 16-bit? So I'm really curious to see how this stacks up. The GFX 100S is 100 megapixels and it is incredible. But the best thing about medium format is the dynamic range, the sharpness, the amount of color you can get out of your images and all of that. So I'm curious to see if 16-bit on X-H2 will get even somewhat close to the GFX or at least just look a bit better than the X-H2S. Let's pixel peep some files and we will see if you can tell the difference between the two cameras and of course take a look at dynamic range, sharpness, color, and more. So for this segment, we're gonna see if we can tell the difference between 40 megapixels and 26 megapixels. And what I did here was I went on a walk with the X-H2 and X-H2S. Both cameras had on the 50 to 140, literally both had on one lens, so I wasn't swapping lenses or anything. Let's see if you can determine what is what based on the megapixels. Starting with this image, you had a bit to look at it. So let's see what we got. And we have the X-H2 on the left. Obviously, it's a pretty obvious one here. And I think if we take a quick look, yeah, basically the X-H2 is even a pretty heavy crop and we can zoom in here. You do lose, it's no GFX for sure, but obviously this is the, the background, but we have substantially more detail here than on the X-H2, which we don't have any detail. I just cropped off the top and the bottom. So this is a pretty big difference. Jumping back into the comparison really quick, um, you get substantially more detail on this and it's not drop off from depth of field. It's just sheerly megapixel. And if we zoom in real quick on the center, even at, this is at 200%, even at 200%, um, you still have way more information on the X-H2. And onto the next shot, this I lined up almost perfectly and I didn't crop in on either of the images. So which is which? We have the X-H2S on the left, X-H2 on the right. So matching the zoom levels here, if we look at the X-H2S, we are at 100, 152% and on the X-H2, we are at 114%. The differences are pretty minor. Obviously you can print this larger, but for this image, you really, you really can't go wrong with either camera. It looks like the X-H2S performs kind of well, which disappoints me. And onto the next image, X-H2 on the left. So I have both images here at 100%. And what's interesting here is that you just have substantially more information on the left on the X-H2. You have way more of this. This window is, is fully in, in focus on the X-H2, it is not. So I'd say big win for the X-H2 here. And zooming in just a little bit further, we can also see the X-H2S is a bit more grainy too. So the X-H2 seems to handle the grain a little bit better. But again, that's just this example. And on to the next one, X-H2 on the left. Here, the differences don't look too extreme. The X-H2 is usable at 200%. The X-H2S is just quite simply not usable at 200%. You have no detail. Like if you look right here on the glass, no detail, plenty of detail here. Next example, take your pick. X-H2 on the left, X-H2S on the right. We're at 200%. And if we take a look, I mean, you could just see this screw here is not hyper. There's not enough detail to really show this screw and especially it's apparent, especially on the X-H2S. And uh, yeah, again, what we're just noticing, I mean, we're zooming in at 200%, but maybe you wanted to crop in on this sign, right? So it's not super unrealistic. And here's a shot of Firescape on a building. X-H2S on the left. And if we zoom in, it seems that for shots where there's a, there's a big depth of field, it's not as noticeable. Uh, obviously you can't push in as far if we zoom in a bit we could see some much more detail here than we can over here and here's a building shot xh2 on the left and if we zoom in here so i thought when i saw this shot in the street i thought it was pretty cool um the light here and if we zoom in you know, it's pretty cool that we could get some windowsills and obviously we can't hear. We already took this as a landscape image, but just say, you know, hey, I wanted to convert it to a portrait image. Um, this isn't my finest work, but you know, I think this is a cool composition and we still have some pretty detail, pretty heavy detail here. If we were to replicate it on this one, you know, it's clearly doesn't hold up as well. Like this is not really printable, how big you could print this shot. And here is our last shot. X-H2S on the left. 
We zoom in here, I set the focus point to the headlight. Focus looks the exact same. We're only at 100%. Yeah, the image on the, the image on the X-H2 is just substantially stronger in my opinion. Even if you look at this like a little bit zoomed out, not even at 100%, you can just see the headlight super sharp. The air induction is super sharp. The X-H1, this file, it just it just doesn't doesn't do it for me. I took a handful of handheld photos with the X-H2 and the X-H2S both using the 56 mm 1.2 Mark II lens. I've already checked focus. Focus is the same in every photo. So what we're gonna do here is take a look at dynamic range and see if we can notice a difference between the two cameras. So what I did here is for each scene, I underexposed slightly and then I underexposed greatly. So for this scene, I focused on this light bulb. Let's take a look at something that looks pretty properly exposed. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, these look to be the same. Let's see if we notice a difference in noise. Wow, the X-H2 is a lot noisier. Now this is a thousand, ISO, so that is a bit noisier, but yeah, that is substantially noisier on the X-H2. Now it's more condensed pixels, so it's understandably so. If we can just potentially debunk this for a second. If we zoom in here and we match the zoom ratio, we can actually see the X-H2S looks a bit more grainier. So the X-H2 is very similar to the X-H1. We have this worm noise going on. I wouldn't necessarily say the X-H2 is more grainier. They're kind of like different grain. It looks like this is a slightly different pattern than the worm, the worm grain. But overall, I would say dynamic range is pretty much the same. It looks like there's better color on the X-H2. It is more saturated. This is more muted. And obviously we could bring this out in post. Let's take a look at the, the other version of this. Let's just bump this five exposure stops, zoom in. Obviously this is not pretty. Um, if you shoot like this, you shouldn't be. I What I did here was I kept the shutter the same and I reduced the ISO by half. So we're at 500 ISO. And in taking a quick look here, um, we could see that there is more color in the X-H2. In doing a quick comparison, and if we match the zoom levels, here the X-H2 looks grainier. I'm, I'm gonna totally admit that. But again, it looks like the colors are a little bit rich here and a little bit muted here. If we zoom out, I'm unsure if it's just the effect, like the sensor difference in color, or if it if this is just a bit more vibrant. Moving on to the next example, we have a street shot. I'll bring the highlights all the way down and the exposure up to like three and a half, roughly. With these matched, again, it looks like the colors are just a little bit more vibrant here. I don't know if I'm crazy. I'm not noticing a big difference. It looks like it's a little bit darker here, not as dark here. So here, I just basically blasted the exposure brought the highlights all the way down and the shadows all the way up. And if we do a quick comparison and zoom in, um, we are at 200%, so pretty heavy. Let's just do 100. It almost looks like there's a little bit more detail in the X-H2. I think we're really, this is not a good looking image. The grain is obviously horrible on both. There's more detail in the X-H2, so it doesn't look as bad. It looks like this is a pretty much a toss up. I don't really, I'm not really seeing any massive difference. Like on this side of the image, in the X-H2, there's more detail in the shadow. Over here, it's a bit darker. Looks like the shadows are a little bit lighter, so it looks like there's more information. So again, I have the same scene, but I basically drop the ISO to its base ISO before low. I applied the same kind of logic here, and if we do a comparison, the X-H2, looks a little bit darker here. And if we zoom in, wow, the X-H2S has fallen apart. I mean, this is this is atrocious. I think with some noise reduction, <laughs> this is crazy, but I think with some noise reduction, the X-H2 is, would be totally acceptable if it was, this was a really nice shot. Naturally, you, you don't wanna do this, you wanna properly expose. And yeah, you can see it's just completely falling apart over here. Just com details just completely destroyed here and the X-H2 is holding it down. So the X-H2 really shined here and I, you, you could probably attribute this to the 16-bit. The last scene I have here is this clock tower and basically, again, shot at 1 50th of a second. This camera does really well handheld. We're shot wide open with the 56, so at f1.2 and 500 ISO. The bright segments of this clock tower look pretty similar. I'm not really seeing any differences. Much to my dismay, I was really hoping there would be a substantial difference here. In looking at these windows, again, I'm not really seeing a big difference in terms of dynamic range. 
Here, it looks like there's a bit more of a flare, but you know, maybe something went on with the light. I'm not really seeing that much of a difference in this image, to be honest. I'm kind of disappointed. I was hoping that the dynamic range would give us better highlights on the X-H2. And now repeating the same experiment, this time in reverse, I basically doubled the ISO. So we should have a bit more information here. It looks like we're getting less detail in this, but I mean, that's just really, really, really slight. Otherwise, everything looks to be the same. Naturally, we have more, we're zoomed in more on the X-H2. I'm not really seeing any difference in this image specifically. It kind of, kind of disappoints me a bit. If we zoom in back to this side, here's one small difference. It looks like there's a little bit more information on this side. This is more blown out over here. This is not. This looks to be about the same. I would say both cameras are pretty much on par. The X-H2 will shine better in extreme circumstances, but nothing kind of glaring, especially if you're doing like night photography like this. I didn't really see anything that was too glaring, so I would kind of call this a draw. So what's the verdict? Well, I'm sending both these cameras back to Fuji tomorrow. And to be honest with you, I'm still a little undecided. The X-H2 exceeded my expectations on the photo quality. It was really nice. And the autofocus was really awesome. I was definitely impressed by it. It performed way better than I thought it would. As for the X-H2S, the photo quality was pretty much the same as I expected. I knew it would be pretty much the same as the X-H1, so no surprises there, but the autofocus was definitely better than the X-H2. I'll update you in a future video on what I end up going with and give you more definitive reasoning. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton as I'm trying to grow this channel. And in the meantime, check out one of these two videos over here. If you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy checking one of those out. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.